everybody coming at you from out in the wilderness uh, it's a pretty warm day today it's a high of 59 degrees Fahrenheit so today's a good day for filming and uh, it's been raining a lot here lately today there's no rain so today is a video on it's kind of a hodgepodge of little ideas and there's a few little odds and ends that I'll be pointing out as we go that have come from comments of things that I want to kind of point out and just little little tips here and there but basically what I'm going to be doing is I've, I've, I've got some ideas for hiding a campsite with camouflage uh, a while back I did a video on camo clothing and then a long time ago me and Nick did a video on stealth shelters well I've got some camo ideas for hiding your campsite and I got about three different types of shelters in my backpack to show and one of them is going to be like a, a combination camp and bushcraft slash survival because in camping and bushcraft you kind of want to be hidden and left alone but if it turns into a survival situation you want search and rescue to find you so I'm going to kind of show you what you might could do I've got an idea for it I haven't tried it out yet so let's get this started now right off the gate right out right out of the gate I want to talk about before I take my backpack off all right I want, I want you to just pay attention to something all right I have my hip belt tight enough that all the weight is being held by my hips not my back because if you can see if you can move a little bit in reality, these straps are not meant to hold all the weight. They're just meant to keep your pack from flopping around all over the place. And somebody else had said one time, oh, and one other thing is where I've got my two-quart canteen. You carry it on top of everything. And as you're walking, honestly, that can be kind of a place to rest your arm at times. You could rest this arm while you're walking. Or you can put it on, take a drink, and then flip it over here to this side. And then you can just kind of rest your arm right here like this. See? So there's a little tidbit of information right there. So let's take that off and throw that down on the ground. Now wearing a neck knife, normally you wear a neck knife out of your shirt when you're at camp. You have it right under your chest strap. Now somebody said one time they were concerned about people wearing their cross straps up too high. That they was afraid that a person would choke themselves. Well, the thing is, you would have to get these snagged on something, and this would have to become undone. Your, 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 your waist belt would have to become undone for that to happen. And the, the other thing about that is, is these are, this is a Fastex buckle, the plastic buckle, and I don't think that would hold up your weight. But anyway, you undo that, and then see, once you get to camp, you'll take your neck knife out, and you'll hang it out in the open. Incidentally, people are going to ask, this is a, I think it's pronounced Kastrom, it's made in Sweden. Kastrom Swedish Forest Knife Number 10, that's what that is. And that is probably the best knife I've ever used. <laughs> it even comes with a, a ferro rod. But I think, I think this is called a burly maple, I think. Either burly maple or curly maple, the handle. Anyway, the other thing, I, just, I like to point all these things out because, like I said, this is a hodgepodge of information. <laughs> but another thing, too, is on these things is you want to use an elastic so that you won't get choked in case it snags. And you want it to held together with a, uh, what do you call these? It's a cord lock. All right. So I usually just tuck it in my shirt. Now I'm going to take this backpack off and we're going to put it on the ground and I'm going to talk about a few other things and then I'm going to pull out a bunch of the items that we're going to be using in today's video. Alright, sound good? I have already spent, uh, looks like almost five minutes just yakking. <laughs> but that's what I like to do is talk. Look at that. Twisted around my machete. Alright, now on my backpack... People love to attach items to the outside of their pack. Now, underneath I have my waterproof ground mat with a sleeping bag inside it. Now, the fact that this is waterproof 
I can take the pack, the pack and just set it right there just like that. Now, one thing real quick, on the very, very, either the top or the outside of the pack, you want your rain gear. That way, if it starts raining, you pull it off, put it over you and your pack. Now, as far as just a rain coat, if you put it on, your pack will be wet. And even if your pack is uh, waterproof, do you really want that? So, I carry a poncho because it fits over me and my pack. Now, when you have things like this slidden in here, if you're going to hike far enough, there's a chance they could fall off. So what I do is I like to put an extra measure of protection in case they do slide out the side, they'll be attached. All right. So you just slide that off like that. And then there's your poncho. Now we're going to lay the poncho on the ground. Let's say I've got it, I have it carabinered on right here. Let's see if you can see that. I have it carabinered on some of the webbing here, and it's got fast text buckles. Now let's take this uh, bottom off right here real quick. I love these bungees. These bungees have a lot of uses. Undo them, and then there's your, there's your bed roll. More about that in a little while. And then you just attach these back. All right, see the outside is waterproof, so it doesn't hurt anything. All right, so let's move that over. Let's move this pack over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this uh, poncho out. And I'm just going to lay all the gear out because I'm going to try to set up all of the, the different shelters in this one area right here. I throw in all these little tips here about how to wear a neck knife and how to wear a canteen and proper straps and, and not losing gear because people asked all these little things and there's sometimes that I just I go over them in the comment section but I don't go over them in real life so anyway now back to emptying this pack out real quick some of the stuff I'll go over in depth some of it I won't but it's a lot of times it's good for me one of the guys I used to camp with would literally turn their pack upside down and just dump the contents out so we have let's see that is that is an experimental camo panel that I'm going to work with. And then this is some tent stakes and some paracord. This is a blue survival type tarp. The reason I call this survival is because nothing occurring in nature is blue except for the sky and the ocean. Uh, people talk about using red and orange for survival and for search and rescue. Well, the thing is, in fall and autumn there is a lot of red orange and yellow out there so of course in the summer it's a lot of green in fall it's like red and, and yellow and orange and then in the winter it's all brown well if you think about it during those seasons there's nothing occurring in nature in the woods down on the ground that's blue 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 so that's something that can 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 stand out something for you to remember uh, in case you get lost now i also have an orange signal panel and a red tarp and then three more experimental camo panels and then this is a camo panel a mossy oak panel bought from Walmart it was a suggestion from a viewer we're going to talk about that this is a super super heavy duty homemade experimental tarp that we're going to talk about and it's mossy oak too more on that that thing's very heavy now normally i wouldn't carry all this this amount of stuff so in here we have a hammock one inch straps and some two inch straps that i want to try that i got recently which are pretty cool i just I've, i have not tried them because i haven't brought i have all the stuff i haven't brought it out in the woods i don't even know what this is <laughs> i guess we'll find out let's see this is some clips Okay, I got to go over that bag. And okay, this is some uh, quarter-inch rope. Let's see what's in here. And this other pouch. Y'all might find this interesting. That's just a spare green bag. These are some tent stakes, some generic tent stakes. This is a floor for a tarp shelter. All right, so let's throw this over here now. And then, like I said, we have the bungee cords over there if we need them. So now let's take a look. In this bag, I want to show you something here real quick. 
Yeah, you can sing the good. Still got that glare. All right, I have a little bag and a little bag and a little bag. And then in here I have eighth inch rope. Now we're going to be using this eighth inch rope for some ridge lines here in a minute. Now in these little bags, this is some of the gear used for tarp setups and shelter building. These are shark clips. Therefore, when you don't have eyelets or grommet, grommets, these things right here bite into the tarp. And you just crank them down and they'll hold. And you can, you got a hole here for whatever you want to, however you want to hang it, carabiners, paracord, whatever. I find it handy to have in these little bags little tiny bungee cords. Now these little bitty bungee cords here, don't ever buy the kind that have the steel hooks because they poke holes in everything. These little plastic kinds right here, I make these, I buy the eighth inch bungee material and then I get the hooks and then I just make my own little cords. It's handy to keep a little bag of those. These little things for my little camo panels, I started making these. That I used to use little pieces of paracord for tying these things off. But now what I'm doing is I take little pieces of this 8th inch bungee material, bungee material and then I put the cord locks on them. Alright, isn't that cool? Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up, we're going to set up a hammock. Like I said, this is... This is one inch webbing, one inch straps. And I'm trying some experimental two inch because they say that not only is the two inch stronger, but they say that the two inch is better for the tree. But well, this this might be an inch and a half, I think. But anyway, it's it's got loops sewn in it, so we're gonna we're gonna set a hammock up with these. A lot stronger. All right, that'll be first. And then we'll right, go just about as always, there's an airplane flying overhead, so <laughs> I guess we're in some sort of a pattern. But these two inch straps, so they got, I don't know, maybe they call that a daisy chain or something. But you want to put these things, I usually start at about eye level. You just wrap them around like that. And then you slide the daisy chain part through. Just like that. Right. And then you'll be able to put your carabiner in wherever one you need. All right, so now we're going to go and put one on the other tree. So I got this on this tree, and I got that stra strap on that tree. And you always want to use a proper uh, hammock carabiner, all right? a, a low-bearing one, one that's meant to hold weight okay, with a locking gate. And that's all you do is you clip that on there just like that. Now, and then you clip the other end. Let's see. I think I got that tree. And then we'll take the other end and clip it on. And normally what I do before I get in and sleep at night, you want a little bit of a droop on the hammock. Some people lay straight in it like a banana, and some people lay on the diagonal. That way it makes them lay, lay uh, more flat. But what I do is I usually get in it and stretch it out some. I'm wearing my machete and my boots, so I'm not going to get into that for right now. But what we are going to do is we're going to look at hiding this site away from view okay bear with me all right now that's pretty obvious okay you can see that from not far away and the trail is right over there so say people are walking along and i don't want them to see me what if it's a crazy person you know uh what if it's a stalker or a murderer on the loose do i want to hide this campsite okay well i'm gonna stretch a ridge line the barrier is going to be if you had enough material you could stretch it all the way around your campsite but i'm trying to block off the view of where i think people will be walking so what this is this is a mesh type material that i ordered 
Now, you're gonna find out here with this one of these others over here, and, and some of the other stuff I've done, like people that remember my reflective fire, my fire reflectors, I stupidly used woodland camo, which is a whole bunch of green, but I'm not gonna be using my fire reflector in the summer when everything is green. I'm gonna be using it in the dead of winter. It should've been brown. But anyway, this material here, I can't remember the name of the material. Let's see, it says, what is that? Winway. It says Winway. And I guess that's because wind blows through it. But as far as the actual camo, I don't know what it is. But you know those football jerseys that people wear that's got all the little holes in them? That's what this material is. So you can kind of see me through it. But that's what this is. And that way it'll let the wind blow through instead of it being a, a solid piece of fabric. Now, this is a gigantic piece of fabric. And the fact that it's got these holes in it, you can kind of see through. I'm going to use this again in a little while. I've never used this kind of material, but this is an experiment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run a ridge line from tree to tree, and then I'm going to use the short clips because there's no eyelets or anything on this. This is just two large pieces of material that I sewed together, and we're going to hang it up from there, okay, to see if we can disguise that campsite. All right, sound good? All right, well, let's, let's rig this so Let's have a look here now. If you look carefully, I am standing in the trail. If you look carefully, you might could see all the junk laid in front of the campsite. But let's zoom in a little more. A little more. Okay, there you have it. I just zoomed in and you can see that little blue thing right, right there. But can you see the hammock? Now I would say that if you're walking down the trail, you're not going to be able to see that. Now let me move forward and see. Now I'm 20 feet closer. I'm like 20, maybe 25 feet off the trail. Let's zoom in. You can see that. You might could see the little blue junk. Now you can really see the blue junk. Let's lift it up a little bit. Now that stuff, wind blows right through that camo mesh. It's not real bad expensive. You could probably buy enough to completely completely uh, block in your campsite. Now let's move forward and then I'm going to take it down. I've used the shark clips to clip it up on that ridge line. I'm going to walk forward. I'm going to be about 30 feet away. And then I'm going to take it down. You can see the difference between with and without. Now like I said, ignore the mountain of gear sitting in front of it. <laughs> But, and you got, you got to look at this with the understanding of thinking to yourself, you know, if you were actively looking for a campsite, you could probably see it. But if you're just walking down the trail, glancing off into the woods, you may not can see it. So, let me walk forward and take it down, okay? Now, I'm going This mesh stuff here, as long as you don't snag it, you can pretty much just use it over and over and over. And it's adjustable because you'll use, you'll put your clips wherever you want it. So now let's set up what I would consider a survival type shelter. And we're going to see if we can disguise it. <laughs> we're going to use the Walmart stuff and the mesh stuff I made. We're going to see the difference. The stuff from Walmart's not real heavy duty. I don't think it'll last as long. Now before I take the hammock down, I got an idea. <clears throat> I came back here, and that's pretty obvious, the hammock. I'm right on the other side of the trail. So just for the heck of it, while the hammock is still up, I'm going to take the Walmart material, and there's something I want to say about this. You have to be kind of careful with this stuff, because it's, it's what they call dye stamped. And see, that's where it's got little, it's, it's stamped. It's stamped where it, so that it's not like a smooth thing. So it's not real heavy material. Now, my main problem with this material is if you buy it, 
it's a real long piece of material here. It's 12 feet, but it's got the trees going in that direction. So really for this to be effective, you need to take a piece and cut it in half and then sew it side by side. But you'll see what I mean here. See the trees going up and down. But just for the heck of it, and I haven't modified this, the way it came from Walmart, I'm gonna stretch it from tree to tree. Even though it's got the trees going this way, we're gonna see from the trail if it if, if it helps hide the, the, the hammock campsite. Okay. All right, so I have have I done myself any favors? That is the Walmart camo blind. I don't know, maybe they call it a duck blind, but that thing, even though it's perforated and got the holes in it, it blows around unless you stake down the bottom. So now let's zoom in and see. See right there? What I was talking about is the, the print, There's the tree goes this way across it. Now from a distance, I don't know if you can tell or not. So now let's take it down and see. We're right at the trail, right at the very edge of the trail. So let's take it down and see if you can see the hammock any better. All right, so how effective was it? What did you think? Was it better than nothing? Was it good? If you were actively seeking a hammock camper, would you have looked, would you have noticed? What if your hammock is yellow or orange or some bright color? What if it's turquoise? <laughs> so let's move, now let's move on to the tarp shelter. So let's say that I am an ultra lighter bushcrafter, okay? I'm gonna bring a very, very extremely lightweight a uh, seal nylon tarp. I'm going to carry a floor to lay on. I'm going to carry an orange signal flag because if I get lost, because I am prepared, <laughs> if I get lost, I want search and rescue to be able to find me. But I'm going to bring a camo panel because I'm going to use the camo panel to, hi to hide, and if things get ugly, I'll have my survival colors. All right, so let's see how this works out. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try both the camo, pa camo panels. Not camel panels, camo. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna have floor, signal flag, tarp, tent stakes, and a ridge line. That's it, okay? Let's work with that. All right, so how's that showing up on camera? Can you tell it's blue? <laughs> so I am an ultra light camper kind of guy, okay? I have a blue tarp and I'm gonna lay a floor in it and put a sleeping bag in it and I'm gonna sleep, all right? So let's walk forward. All right, so I'm an ultralight kind of guy. I've got my lightweight blue tarp. I bought, brought a floor to protect my sleeping bag. It's a dual layer, breathable floor, okay? So I got me a good shelter here. Now, if things turn bad, I can add my flag or maybe even my red emergency survival blanket, and I'll show you that in a minute. But for now, I want to be hidden, so let's try the two different camo panels. All right, we are at the edge of the trail, and the Walmart camo blind sticks out like a sore thumb. <laughs> now. I want you to look real closely. <clears throat> I want you to look real closely from here to here where you see all the blue. If you look, there's just a tiny bit on the outside of this tree that looks pretty camoed. Now, I'm going to bring you in right there. Okay, now see? The blue is still showing through, but if you look to the left of that big tree right there, you can see what I'm talking about. That camo actually works pretty good. Like if you were, I guess maybe if you had a green tarp or a tan tarp, 
All right, so now let's try the mesh. Let's take that off and throw the mesh on and see if it's more effective. The color is off a little bit, but it has really disguised that blue. I'm going to take it off in a minute, and you can see. But that is just, that is a world of difference there. Not only is it a world of difference, but like I said, you got to go from the mindset of thinking, if someone was actively looking for you, walking down this trail, you know, a lot of times they're looking down at their feet, and a lot of times they're looking ahead at the trail. So when they're looking off to the side, they're just sort of glancing. So I'd say, and this material here, this mesh material is a whole lot more heavy duty than the, uh, the other material. So I would say this is a clear winner in that case. The other stuff's just like a, maybe put it in the woods and leave it, maybe. So now I'm going to pull this off. Now I got two ridge lines. There's another ridge line up above and I'm going to show you how to deck out this. For, so let's say for example, you're staying in this shelter. Okay, you're staying in this shelter, right? And you're out here messing around and you break a leg. Okay, and you can't get away from your shelter and you're like, Mayday, Mayday, come get me. Where are you at? I can't walk out. Come find me. So I'm going to show you how you're going to deck the shelter out to where you can be seen. Now you tell me if somebody wouldn't wouldn't deck out that wouldn't see that shelter out in the woods. Now the orange flag I just laid it over it, but what you would do is take the orange flag and run it on a pole up above it or run it from a tree. Now we're gonna walk down the trail carrying the camera, seeing how easy that is to see. You'd have to be Ray Charles to not see that shelter. That is a search and rescue, find me, survival type shelter. Now this next one, I like to call it my Bigfoot hunting shelter. <laughs> because you could call it a... I don't know, you could call it a photographer's shelter or a hunter's shelter, but <clears throat> I think it's got more mystique if you're setting up stealthy like trying to photograph Bigfoot or a cryptid or something. <laughs> what this is, now, this is very, very heavy, heavy, heavy uh, vinyl type material. On the inside, this is what they make those awnings for RVs. Very, very, very heavy duty stuff. Now, the thing behind this is the inside of it is the very, very heavy material, and then the outside of it is camo. Now, here's the idea behind this it's a mossy oak camo, and this is the idea behind this. Your waterproof qualities are on the inside where the vinyl part is, and the outside part is a stretchable polyester type. And the idea behind this is, is when you have a ripstop nylon or a type of shiny seal nylon, it's got that shine to it, that unnatural shine. And with this, it's got like a dull look. And if it rains, it won't be extra, extra shiny. And it'll also dampen some of the noise. Now, 
more of the beauty of this thing is I've noticed with these camos there is a pattern a distinctive pattern and what has been done with this is the camo fabric has been chopped into pieces and sewn back together now if you'll see right across the center there there's a tree that lines up but some of these other places see where that tree stops the fabric has been cut up and the edges aren't square like if you look over here I don't know if you can see or not this edge here is rounded slightly rounded and over there that edge over there's got an angle to it it's got brown webbing on each corner so there's some more I think there's a piece right somewhere over there but there's one on the edge too See if I can find it. Yeah. That way you can either stake it down or tie it off a paracord. Isn't that neat? So we're going to set that up and take a look at that. Alright, so on the front of this tarp here, you see how uneven the edges are? What we're, that that, that kind of lends towards getting rid of the straight lines. Now what's bad is the ridge line itself is kind of a straight line. But, I don't know, we're just going to have to see how that works out. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put some stakes on the back side and then tie paracord. I got some strips of paracord and we're going to tie it to those loops in the front and pull it over. Alright, so we're going to do that first and then we'll put our camo panels around it. And maybe over it. So we staked off the back side, and then I've got this paracord coming down here. So what I'm going to do now, cover up part of the front, I'm going to see what a camo panel looks like. And honestly, this is one of those things where it's looking to me like where I really, I could just throw the mesh over the front, and I'd be good to go. And now this is a little bit more of the color of what's out here on the ground. So I've got these little places here, little loops. And I'm going to put this panel on the front. I really need another one this color. I've only got one this color. The two, the other two that I have aren't quite the right color. But we're going to see how this looks. decided not to use this other panel here even though it's more of the right color I'm going to use the true timber conceal just because I've got two of them but this is what I was talking about about that those things the little uh, cord locks so let's see if I can show you down here how it works let's see if I can zoom in All right, see this little cord lock? It's like this. Well, actually what you can do is just put it on there like that. Now I gotta stretch it up here. Let's see, where's my hand at? <laughs> there it is, it's zoomed. Okay, so the more, now what I can do is I can stretch it up here and just give it a pull and it'll lock into place. And so see now, as I stretch this out, you unzoom it. See, as I stretch this out, there's going to be an opening here for me to shine a camera through or binoculars so that I can view wildlife. And now this may be better if you're going to search for like cryptids or Bigfoot or something. You'll want to set this up like way ahead of time. You know, like a month ahead of time so that it's out here. And they know it's out here and they never see anybody around it so they get used to it you know what i mean so i'm gonna stretch this out and then put the other panel on it. so you can see i got the first panel up and it is totally not the right camo for these leaves 
But there is an opening where you can look out. So I'm going to put the other panel up. And then I think we're going to cover it with that thing to really try to hide it. I hear an owl off in the distance. Sounds awesome. Now right there I decided to go ahead and use one of the cord locks. And I decided to use the other camo to see if it would make it look different from a distance. And then down there I've got two of the cord locks. It's getting lower they are. And then over here I used a bungee cord, a little mini bungee cord stretching over there. So now what I gotta do is I gotta put one more over here. And then we're gonna stand back and see it from a distance without the uh, without the um, big cover over it. Let's see how it looks. All right, now let's go off in the distance and see how it looks from front and back. I want you to look at how thick it is back behind me. I may try to go over there to get a back view. It's pretty thick right here. So I'm about 20 feet away. See, the color is all wrong. In Georgia, where the leaves are, there's just there's just so much more red and brown, and that's got like a green to it. Let's go back a little further and look, and then we'll look at the front. Of course, that mesh has got some brown, so maybe that'll be a good thing. So I'm probably about 50 feet away. I don't see it. I don't know if it's going to show up on video or not, but 50 feet away is not bad at all. Let's see if I can zoom in and find it. There you go. See that unnatural color? See, look at that. Yeah, we're about 50, maybe, maybe 60 feet away. Nobody would ever know you were there. So let's go around to the front and take a look. Now we're up close. I can already tell. You know, it's weird. This one on this side, the color of it's right, but you can see a repeating pattern, a tiny repeating pattern that I don't like. And that one... You can see it has a much larger pattern that doesn't repeat as often. If the color was better, it would be much better. But see, look at that one. And another problem is, is you can see the square shapes of the stuff. So let's back up and see if it's any better. And then I'll throw the mesh cover over. Maybe the mesh cover is the, the secret tool to doing this. See, that black part of it is showing up pretty bad. Yeah, that, it's got to have the mesh. I'm going to throw the mesh over and we'll see what it looks like then. Now that made a huge difference. Huge. I'm sure you can see that, but like I said, if you were actively looking for it, you might not. Now remember, there's openings underneath there that you can see out. I'm going to put the camera in there and see what it looks like. First, we're going to move around and take different angles of it. All right, here's the trail. Now let's pan across the woods. I want to see if you can see it. Great, there's a bug on the screen. <laughs> let's start over. I'm going to pan. I love doing this because I can't tell on the viewfinder what's what. Now you got to remember we're scanning very slowly. And like I said, you have to think from the perspective of a person walking down the trail. Anybody see it yet? All right, let's see if we can zoom in on it.
Let me lock the camera down right there. There we go. All right, let's zoom in on it. Now remember, that's mesh. Wait a minute, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it focused on that tree. There it is. All right, now I'm convinced if somebody wasn't looking, they'd never see it. Now let's go get up close to it and then let's go inside it. Now I've always messed with camo fabric. I've never fooled with camo mesh. Now let's look here for a minute. I'm going to try to zoom in to see if you can see through it. Can you kind of tell? See that line? There's a definitive line going across it where it's laying on solid fabric and then you can see through it. All right, let's go inside and take a look. All right, you can see there's part of the floor that I can use and then I've got the other reflective part. Now, let's look at the real beauty of this shelter. Look at that. You've got a viewing portal from one end to the other. Now, if I had more mesh, I could put more mesh on the ends to close it off. Or actually, I could probably use that Walmart stuff to close the ends off. Now, let's see here for a minute. Let's crawl inside. And let's see. I see, I can sit in here and I can see everything. I can see perfectly, I can see, well not perfectly clear because it's mesh, but you can see through, I can see everything. Now I don't know, the camera may not can focus on that, uh, but I'm going to try it. Let's see. I'm just going to take you off the stand and try. Turn it around. All right, now, so if you were laying down, okay, the back wall is all heavy duty tarp, and then the front wall, got that window going all the way across it. So let's see if you can see out now. Well, you kind of can on the camera. I'm telling you, I can see pretty good. See the trees out there? I don't know if the camera will focus or not. That's what it looks like on the inside of it. And I'm telling you, you saw it from the road. I mean, the trail, you cannot find it from the road. Like I say, I, 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 I'm sounding like a broken record. Unless you're actively seeking a shelter, you'll never see this one. Never see it. There's a lot of room in here, too. I got enough room for that other reflective floor, too. Let's see. I'm going to scoot this forward. This is my... This is my super heavy duty, heavy, heavy, heavy duty floor. It's reflective on the inside, protecting it from the cold burning. That'll be right there. Let's see. Yeah. All right, let's check the length. Yep, length is perfect. Every bit of it's underneath the tarp. That's all you gotta do now. Pull off that sleeping bag. Get it out. Let's see. Okay, let's see. Let's see. That. <clears throat> That'll be my sleeping area. And then this down here. This is my Bigfoot viewing area. <laughs> right. oh. 
I could just kick back like this. You just watch. There's actually room for three people in here. The only problem is, is rain will come in through this opening. It's only waterproof from here back where the tarp goes over. But that ain't that big a deal. Alrighty. Well, this video is extremely long. It's got to be. I bet it's an hour. So, I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you picked up a few bits and pieces. This camo mesh is the boss. I mean, it, it is wicked. It is, it is the way to go. I think I'm going to get some more of it, and I'm going to explore different colors, because all I've ever messed with is the fabric. I've never messed with the mesh. So, I think it's a winner in my book. It even covered up the blue survival shelter. So, but it's even better over this. And these camo, pano, camo panels, these things are great now when you got the right color mesh over them because it just makes them, it gives them a, just a different kind of depth. So, anyway, hope you had fun, hope you enjoyed it, and we shall see you in the next one. I'm doing this so you can see me disappear into the shelter.